everyone, this is Greg, aka Gregoire from Greg Suzuki Guide, um, over to Paris, France. We had a heat wave, a kind of pre-summer heat wave or early summer heat wave this week uh, until yesterday, uh, yeah, approximately yesterday. So I was going for a, an almost full dry week and drink nothing alcohol wise uh, nothing else than maybe some light beer and not every day uh, but all of a sudden uh, some storms hit paris and we have a bit uh, fresher uh, air now uh, and uh, especially me under the attic the temperature has dropped enough for me to do a video today i mean before noon um, and just tasting two whiskies that's all uh, and i was also uh, planning to do a kind of rambling discussion uh, around a theme instead of uh, doing a tasting but i found something that could combine both <laughs> so after a, a introduction or some kind of a uh, topic about a uh, cask and things like that i will uh, make the comparison between this the smoky 10 which i already talked about but just a bit during a live show i think uh, last uh, maybe yeah in 2020 or, or last year and i will compare it with the old curiositas so what is interesting is that it's almost the same recipe if i may say both are pitted it even says heavily pitted on this one both are a combination of three same uh, cask types uh, of course there are uh, one is from 2014 the curiositas and the uh, smoky 10 is from 2020 so six years of difference uh, and interestingly the appearance but i'm gonna go back to this in in, uh, in a minute the appearance of uh first appearance of uh one of the whiskies on the table i'm uh, gonna use as a color comparison is from 2015 uh, and yeah 2014 also corresponds at a specific time so that's the plan we'll see how it goes i'm not gonna be super long on the topic mind you because it gave me an idea for maybe an interesting live show and an interactive one so a uh, kind of not is it a space side game but something alternative uh, which might be more tricky and uh, i don't know more interesting but uh, maybe more instructive let's say um, okay so uh, before starting the comparison uh, i will just uh, give you a quick reminder i did several videos about benriach three or four i don't remember now but i covered the 10 curiositas so uh, i will put links below to all the benriach i i covered uh, there are some also mentions on my website of course and some tasting notes um, but uh and same i will also give you links to learn more about the distillery which i'm not going to speak a lot today except for maybe uh, tell you the basics like it was founded in uh 1898 by john duff it's it's space side distillery it was a distillery like many from the space side or most of them or all in 19th century they were uh, using peat to, uh, to to smoke their malt so anyway <laughs> almost all whiskies as i understand were pitted prior to the 20th century so uh, in scotland at least so what uh, happens is uh, it was under different ownership and in 2016 brown foreman the big group that owns jack daniels of course for instance um, 
took over uh, Billy Walker's uh, company, uh, and they uh, they got Benriach, they got Glendronach, between other distilleries. Uh, and what is uh, interesting is they also change the master blender obviously and it's rachel berry which figures on the, the tube of the smoky tin uh it's ma she's mentioned uh after uh taking care of Beaumont, who came uh to work on uh on the benriach uh, and glenronach brands uh i know it's controversial as uh, some people some youtubers uh didn't like the work she did uh, or the attribute to her it's sometimes difficult when when it's a, an all cask selection and it's just a decision it's not necessarily uh, something that was planned i mean not necessarily the new master blender's choice uh, in big companies um, there are master blenders there are distillers but they are chief products as we say in france that sometimes they decide with the owners, not the pr the people who make the whiskey. Of course, they decide of some things, but they have to answer to some demand from the owners. So that explains some choices regarding uh, our topic of today, which will be uh, integrity malt versus uh, um, contemporary practices let's say to put a long story short so I'm gonna compare it with the uh, Ben Riach 10 what else to say uh, Ben Riach so was pitied uh, in the 19th century then it went unpitied and then it's only in 1972 yeah um, where they decided to use peat again continental peat of course not isla peat so it's a bit drier and ashier uh, and also in 2004 they did launch this curiositas which is the uh, peated 10 years old from Benria this for the generalities um, what else I wanted to uh mention yeah the ppm the phenols uh regarding uh, the peat the other phenols uh is supposed to be 35 to 38 ppm so this is what they consider as heavy it is almost exactly the same mind you as lefroig a big difference is that uh, benriach is not medicinal right um, so there you have it basically both versions which interesting are non chill filtered non colored but there are some important mention in one of them and that is why I'm gonna start by my special topic now uh, let me put that here so we don't see much advertising of the brand but just we still see things so I'm gonna cover this and why this led to led me to a reflection it's because of this in fact so in the tube of this where well you can see a different uh, matur maturation types by the way it's a bit small but uh, it's bourbon cask jamaican rum and virgin oak and yeah we're gonna speak about cask policies uh we're gonna come back to it longer in another video like i said a video or live show we'll see or premiere uh, but shortly uh, the topic uh, was born when i read this in the uh, back of the tube look at this it doesn't say natural color where let me show you the old tube it's a bit small but you can see it's non filtered natural color right this one doesn't say natural color it says something very awkward that struck me and led me to some reflection i'm gonna share with you this one says natural cask imparted color natural cask imparted color what does that mean 
That means they're going to rely on the cask choices, which also implies the treatment of the cask, mind you, to have a result they want regarding color. This is very important. In the concept of natural color, the thing is, you're not going to look, in theory, for a, a specific color profile for your whiskey. You're looking for an aromatic profile, mainly, right? You have the recipe, You well, either you reproduce some reference core range or else that you had before, or you're going to create a new one, but you don't focus on color except most probably for big companies of course the uh, core range or the entire core range or the entry level one which is often in big companies not always of course but often in big companies uh, using E158 caramel color essence of caramel to be more precise which is not the same than when you do your caramel home I saw some videos about that and I don't agree this is more concentrated. This is reduced in sugar compared to the one you will uh, do home. Otherwise, the impact will be huge. So some of the comparisons I've s I saw are, are totally Ill irrelevant. But <laughs> what is relevant is that it has an impact uh, on the taste. So what's the little rambling about uh, uh, or discussion? It's uh, about what I call the downside of uh, asking for integrity mold. And uh, we will focus on the color for this uh, discussion. Why the downside? Because, well, one, th the, the, the uh, let's say, the uh, connoisseur or uh, demanding consumer, which is not the average one, we have to agree that, unfortunately, there's still it will be. Uh, maybe uh, for another topic there's still a lot of cliches uh, in the average consumers about whiskey and the two most important led us to our topic and, and what's uh, written on on the the bottle it's they don't want the whiskey to uh, to be hazy for them it's suspect of, of something wrong and they don't want the whiskey to be as light as this which I will use for an example later on so what do they want uh, and this is a moderate example mind you mm -hmm. it's still moderate it's not so dark uh, but it's a 10 years old and this is a 10 to 15 years old so it's a bit clearer but this is an undie bottling a small batch this is a bigger batch and this has virgin oak and it's toasted and so you maybe you begin to understand what I mean now this is related to another topic which is the knowledge statement uh, whiskeys the NAS whiskeys and I did an entire video and I think I covered without being too pretentious all the aspects or 90% of the aspects of the question, which implies a thing which I learned too few times see covered uh, in, in YouTube and a bit more in uh, the blogging territory, is the wood technology. I mean, how the producers want to influence taste and color. So today we're going to focus, except for the comparison between those two, we're going to focus on the color for the, the, the first topic. I will put some timestamps, don't worry. So if you're not interested by the topic, you can see immediately the, uh, the, the numbers to go to the tasting. Okay, let's uh, make it quick. Don't want to be uh, doing a long video today. Cask imparted color. That means, what I mean by the downside of uh, dropping uh, for craft distilleries or distilleries who want to comply to more demanding consumers uh, demand of uh, saying no color added no color added artificially but they don't say no color added in another way and that's exactly my point 
cask imparted color. That means that they will look, not mandatorily, but they will most probably look after a specific cask choice that will help them obtain a certain color to produce a certain effect and attract the consumer. So cask imparted color, how can you cask impart? By using sherry casks, especially PX, which is darker uh, than the Oloroso uh, for the same age, let's say. They can use, and they use a lot, wine casks, X-ray casks, stuff like that. And they will be also heavily toasting or heavily charring their oak or the different type of uh, oak cask they have. So you see, this is what I call the downside of asking for integrity malts. It's that you think you have been uh, saved from the uh, manipulation of the liquid by adding color but you're not safe because they're going to manipulate the color anyway using different cask type to produce the effect they want now i wanted to give you some examples but it appeared that i don't have home because i was not trusty uh, trust i didn't trust enough those companies so far no puns intended but a bit still a bit <laughs> to buy their stuff seeing some uh, i'm talking about new scottish distilleries considering and i forgot something let me uh okay oh you know you know it so i'm not gonna show it um, what i meant is those complex cask recipes three four five just to have more color because you have a new whiskey which is three four years old this will influence the distillate uh, for the final taste of the whiskey in my opinion and i see mixed reviews on several uh, continental or island whiskies that are young and from new distilleries and i'm a bit worried i have to say about it the counter example of this for me and the mastery which uh, i will really praise is arden american and it's the bottle i have behind me that i forgot to show you with this company it seems even if they have a use of uh, a lorazo or a px at a certain extent uh, a bit like let, let, let me just pause yeah so this is the one I wanted to show you, Arden American. Uh, this one is a 45, I think, 43, uh, but I will cover it anyway on the channel. Uh, it is darker than this, all right, uh, and it is younger, so it might be a counter example. But it has a, it has a, I think the half is is uh, sherry casks and uh, olorzo and peaks, but it doesn't ruin the content and this is what i like let me give you a, a, a better example of this so you see this i i in maybe another project i will anonymize the the bottle so you won't be uh if i was showing guessing if i was showing you just this i think you would have said oh it's a 20 years old sherry cask no it doesn't have an age statement but i'm almost sure it's under 10 years old or well, the majority is under 10 years old but what is it a talisca sky which is a combination of refill and toasted american barrel with a high proportion of toasted cask it's what they say not what i say so let me show you this and then let me show you this what do you think this is This is uh, most probably under 10 years old with a lot of toasting. Uh, so wood technology, what I call toasting, charring and using other cask type to change the color and taste. And this, this is a talisker as well, uh, indie, independent bottling. And this is written 10, but I know there are 10 to 15 years old cask in it mostly bourbon uh, refill uh, and some first fill uh, barrels so you see the difference 
there is wood technology going, uh, going on. Uh, and the color is affected by that. We can see uh, a bit more bitterness in the sky than in uh, the 10 years old and even the storm, which I prefer to the sky. So see, and I can give you also another example. I don't want to be too long on this. Uh, my own whiskey, the, the, uh, I, uh, if I may say, the one I blended, uh, the French one. Because I, I know, I don't have the complete uh, details, but I, I did uh, put the most I could in the video related to it. But it's not, it's not about that. It's because I know this is a three years old uh, ex-red wine cask. It's the the the, the core range uh, biggest reference. Uh, this is a sauterne, but also acacia wood. But I tried other acacia wood whiskies, and they're not all that dark, believe me or not. But this is six years old, so double the age in sauterne cask. So sweet wine from France. If I wanted to to select cask to 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 put more impact on color, uh, ask the, the distiller to, to uh, toast or heavily char, I will have that result. But I used some older cask and I got this color, see? So the cask imparting color was not, absolutely not my idea, my goal, I mean. So what I mean by that is, uh, if I wanted, I could have chosen uh, an appealing result with these red hues to make it feel like it's a 30 years old Glen Farkless, something like that. That wasn't my goal. I'm not saying it was Rachel Barry, who I respect, uh, to do that, but at some extent, the fact of, uh, and they they did release some darker stuff after it worries me about this use of the the world of once again natural cask imparted color what you four words instead of natural color and that's it okay enough of this quite some rambling <laughs> okay we don't want this to be too long I'm gonna do a quick nose comparison so this is the smoky uh, the uh, sorry curiositas pitted malt 10 years old so just this nice combination that can um, make some illusion uh, for uh, a few seconds to, to be confounded uh, confused with the uh, an isla malt but it's drier it has some elements of hay some almost farm sides almost um, leathery things which could lead to think it could be a lagavaline or port chalot at certain extent but it but it is not some almost uh, rubble elements rubber elements coming on but fading quick citrus fruit some hints of exotic fruit but they are behind the apples and and uh, lemons and, and maybe grapefruit this doesn't this feels a bit exotic but you don't have that sugary feel that you can have in other whiskies uh, with the uh, uh, rum cask and stuff so it quite mastered now on to this legs why they don't stay much uh, viscosity seemed to be uh, moderate let's see the others viscosity wise i didn't do a comparison Mm. more viscous the legs stay longer interesting because the recipe is supposed to be the same but we don't know the proportions between bourbon jamaican rum and virgin oak 
it's not disclosed for either one or the other version so okay this one it's basically seemingly the same but it differs this is more sanitized if i may say i mean more civilized uh, more uh, maybe uh, rounded version of the other i wouldn't say industrial though it is not We still have some exotic things coming on, uh, some ripe banana, pineapple, a bit more, maybe a more flambéed uh, pineapple than in the other. The virgin oak is there, it just indicates some oak influence, but it's not massive. So it's balanced, but it has less charm, in my opinion, than the other one. Okay, let's go on the taste now for this. So I reviewed it again, so I'm not been gonna be super long on, on this one. this one a lot I know some don't like it I don't understand why but of course it's very personal it's coating your palate it has some warm spices not so much the finish is long lingering very nicely with some sugar alm sugar almonds not too much sugar but some nice uh, Vanilla, it's, it's on the background, yeah, but some, yeah, su uh, al sugared almonds. Um, what did I wrote on this? There's some esters, of course, but they're, they're tamed. Uh, there's some floral elements as well. And a uh, touch of, uh, of pineapple, that's true. There's some some ashy smoke, but it's not aggressive. Um, it's quite quite well balanced, and the rum has a big influence in connecting the uh, bourbon notes. Which is those vanilla and sweet spice, slight ginger influence, but very shy, moderate. The connection between those and the the smoke, the pitted malt, and, and, and the virgin oak is very interesting. Excuse me. <coughs> I see the heat is starting to come. Uh, in from the uh, the courtyard, I mean, be on the not on the street side, but on the other, and it hits a bit already. So heats. So yeah, color. It's it's a very. I'm a painter initially, so it's it's a passionate, uh, very interesting topic for me. Um, so yeah so we had this one now we're gonna have the new one so again my bottle is from 2020 uh 28th of september while the other one was uh from 2014 if you want to know the 8th of uh may right if we watch the colors of this and i'm trying to check it out here it's almost identical but yeah it seems the uh, the contemporary one is more rounded but we'll see on the palette Slangeva
Hmm. Okay, that was less obvious. Um, the three times and also I tried it, now it's more obvious. Ah, the virgin oak has more impact on this one. You can feel this kind of dry, biscuity thing, oaky, bit spicy influence that the virgin oak has on the other two cast types. And it is still working, but it's really on the edge of overpowering the other cask. And I, I'm not super happy about that. It's still a good whiskey, mind you. But this is the limit of the thing. And I think Rachel plays a bit, maybe too much on this, on the two distilleries now. But I have to try more. Okay. I will... Um, I will retro compare it because I, I want to stay with that sensation but with a few more drops before comparing the two with a few more drops. So I mean I'm gonna re continue on, on this one before getting to the, the other one. Yeah so this is confirmed the versions are different. Okay, so we have the same notes in theory, floral, fruity, a bit estery, but it's obvious there's less first fill bourbon cask in there, while well, there's more in the other for me. Way ob more obvious, way more in the other than this one, and this is important in the mix, in my opinion. Okay. The overall profile is drier, not necessarily spicier, but it's drier. Um, we lose some of the charm of the previous one. Um, it has a warming heat again, but it comes from the virgin oak in my opinion, and from the cast selection maybe also of the two others uh, component. So. While it's not a bad whiskey, it's narrower for me in the aromatic profile on the palate. Less seductive. It's more wood tech. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm sticking to this. Um, let's now come back to um, the Curiositas. which I regret not to have taken another bottle. That's why I'm cautious in consuming it. Also because I have a lot of other things, of course. So with a few drops. Mm. Well, for me, it's way better. Um, there's no comparison. I mean, there is, but uh, let me just check the uh, the score. Okay. Mm. Last sip of this. Very good. Just changing a few things. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, score wise, this one I give him an 89 out of 100. 89. Yeah, it's in my scale once again. Don't compare it necessarily to other people's scare, scale because I'm going up to 100. And for this one, it was originally rated 85 it's now rated 83 so 
mind you, uh, note that everything over 81 for me is a decent, is a good whiskey. You can have a look again at my uh, scoring system. But 89 is far superior. Uh, now, price wise, uh, the Curiositas, I had it. Uh, a while ago at a special retailer at 48 euros so with a bit higher than online if you don't count the shipping and this one I had it on offer instead of 34 I had it for 29.90 uh, uh, euros in a supermarket so uh, interesting good value but I won't replace it I prefer uh, by far the old Curiositas. So I'm a bit worried. I haven't tried the Smoky 12. I haven't tried the others of the new range. Uh, and honestly, I'm a bit worried. I'm super happy with the, the others I have that I, especially the 17 Solstice uh, port heavily pitted with is a stunner really. Uh, be, be beyond 90, I mean 92, 94, I don't remember. The scoring is super high, if not higher than that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I regret the old core range, uh, if I have to judge only on this, which is not fair, I know. Uh, but yeah, a bit worrying, a bit uh, more wood tech involved. Definitely, so I think my uh, concern topic was on point. I'm sorry to say that. I will develop it, develop it in another video or live show, like I said, with a fun, I think, thing idea. But for now, it's over. I hope it was interesting. Uh, as you see, if you have the uh, possibility and you like to have your a bit of uh, continental peat um, whiskey I will really recommend you to get the Curiositas instead of the new Smoky 10 but it's up to you thanks for watching if you like this video please like it click on the notification bell if you want to be uh, aware of the next ones and subscribe please if you haven't yet and giving likes and adding comments please because I still have some videos with zero comment uh, if I'm not mistaken uh, it helps the video and the channel to be referenced so thank you in advance bye bye